Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Yes, you read that title correctly, so let's jump right in. And special thanks to Vernell Diamond for sharing this. This is just a five minute clip, so let's begin. Uh, a question coming in from uh, Black185 in our, in our uh, digital community said, do you, do you think, I'm assuming, uh, LGBT community and the black church can coexist? Absolutely. I, I, let me push that question, because that, that's sort of an obvious yes. Church ain't turning nobody away. How should the black church and LGBT community exist? I think it's going to be diverse from church to church. Every church has a different opinion on the issue, and every gay person is different. And I think that to to speak the church, the black church or white church or any kind of church you want to call it, are all the same is totally, totally not true. And all gay people are not the same. While churches may differ in certain areas, the color or ethnicity of someone does not matter as far as the body of Christ goes. You're either in Christ or not. But to compare that to gay people not being the same within the church is false. That's like saying all murderers are not the same. All liars or thieves are not the same. They may differ in the degrees they embrace their sin, but they are still embracing sin and believing it's okay to do that when God has said it's not. The, the, the types of relationships that are afforded are based on the types of people in each individual case. Yeah. And LGBTs of wipes and sorts have to find a household of worship that reflects what your views are and what you believe like anybody else. And the church should have the right to have its own convictions and values. If you don't like those convictions and values, you totally disagree with it, don't try to change my house, move into your own and, and establish that sort of thing and find somebody who gets what you get about faith. This is 100% idolatry and creating a God that accepts what you want to accept. Your views mean absolutely nothing if they contradict God's views. And no, the church does not have the right to have its own convictions and values if they don't agree with God's values. And uh, trust me, I've talked to enough LGBT, they are not all the same. Oh. They aren't the same in one sense. Some LGBT are not Christians, and some believe they are Christians. But every LGBT that considers themselves a Christian is the same in the sense that they believe it's okay to embrace a lifestyle that God forbids. For sure. <laughs> all Anyone than all Christians no, are the same. No, no. Uh, but how, how do we... First of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving. No, this is devolving and giving Christianity a black eye. Evolved and evolving. Where, where, I, I, you, where I, are you? I think that where I am is to better understand we bought, the church bought into the myth that this was a Christian nation. And once you get past that, which a lot of people are going to criticize me because they're still going to think it's a Christian nation, which is a whole different show. Mm -hmm. But once you begin to understand that democracy and, and that a republic actually is designed to be an overarching system to protect our unique nuances, then we no longer look for public policy to reflect biblical ethics. If we can divide or what you would call separation of church and state, yeah. then we can dwell together more effectively. Because atheists, agnostics, uh, Jews, all types of people, Muslims pay into the government, the government then cannot reflect one particular view over another just because we are the dominant group of religious people in the country because those numbers are changing every day. We need a neutralized government that protects our right to disagree with one another and agree with one another. Yes, but freedom to agree and disagree is one thing in the world and even on secondary topics in the Bible, but we need to agree on the foundational things of God's word and what sin is to fellowship in truth. This is just one more step supporting the ecumenical movement. There's still a bit to go and I'll leave the full link below, but let's understand that we should love and care for the LGBT community just as we should love anyone that is a sinner, which is all of us. We all need to hear the gospel, repent, and put our faith in Christ's finished work on the cross. One lie, stealing anything regardless of value, or even having one lustful thought that you dwell on, is all it takes to proclaim someone guilty in God's perfect ways. So this isn't even about LGBT. It's about people like T.D. Jakes compromising Christianity and God's word to allow certain sin to be okay within the body. Shame on him and people like Stephen Furtick who adore this man. But this is the broad road the church is on today, the road of compromising God's truth for our desires. 
2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Folks, that time isn't coming. That time is here. We are seeing prophecy unfold before our very eyes. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.